If Pahoki is to come back in this game, guys, they're going to have to do so without their leading rusher and their leading wide receiver. I just found out that Blue Devil running back Fred Pickett was taken to Glades General Hospital. He's having problems breathing. They believe he has a cracked rib. That was told to me by one of the coaches of Pahokee. And, of course, as we already know, leading wide receiver Chris Dunkley is watching on the sideline with an injured leg. Meanwhile, over here on Glade Central side, some of the guys are stretching out. I understand that uh, the running back, uh, Antoine Chisholm, has gotten some cramps, but he's okay. Guys, back to you. Thank you. And, yeah, that we, we were mentioning about Pickett uh, earlier uh, and certainly hope he's going to be okay. Taken to the hospital is... Uh, Something you don't want to see, especially in uh, in a game like this. But it's showing how how well Pahoki is doing in this game to stay with the Raiders. Around the right side, there goes Noel again, and fighting for the try to get the first down. But looks like he's going to be pushed out just shy, maybe a yard shy. But uh, Glades with a big momentum shift there, so this is really a big drive again for. Well, Pahokee. this is going to be an uphill battle for Pahoki from the sheer standpoint that they've lost two of their biggest weapons. And it's tough enough to play the number one ranked team in the area with your, your two best player, two of your yeah, best players, yeah. let alone going to running backs who haven't run the ball that yeah, much. Yeah, Pickett who had gained uh, 1,100 yards this year and also you saw was playing, uh, playing a pretty good job in the secondary as well. And uh, Dunkley, perhaps the leading recruit in the nation or one of the leading receiving recruits in the nation but they pounded ahead again um, Noel doing a nice job this time around the left side and uh, here comes picking, the replay the first down and we're gonna see how well this is blocked we get up in the hole and Noel just gets his shoulders he doesn't touch yeah. until he's to the second level um, that left side has been very productive for Pope so down by four, and we've got most of the fourth quarter to play here in Bell Glade. Glade Central holding a four-point lead over Pahokee in the 2009 Muck Bowl. The first down giver on the left side. This is going to be a new face, but nothing new there is there is a flag. Uh, Jacquet Purdue got the carry. And this is what happens. You get a flag if it's, if it's against Pahokee, which I, I'm assuming it is. And now you're put in a position where you just can't run the ball. And and when it you know when you're running the ball as well as these guys are, and then to have to and then when you get with that holding penalty, it just you know it takes out so much out of you because you've worked so hard, and then now you got another whole hill to climb. Yeah, and I, I, again, I'm not going to harp on this with the officials, but uh, these two teams have played nine football games, and. I would imagine that they've got as many penalties between the two of them in this game as they almost did for the rest of the season. Yeah, there have been quite a few penalties. So uh, Pahokee uh, on a timeout now. Uh, Blaze Thompson wants to talk to the referee about something. Uh, he's not happy, obviously. He's got an issue with something going on out there. Yeah, any speculation, Bill, is what that might be. Definitely. He, uh, Blaze Thompson called a timeout specifically to talk to the official. And you have to do that, which is is taking one of your timeouts away. But he really has a an issue with the holding penalties, especially away from the ball. See, Dan, if a, a good official is not going to call things that have no, absolutely no significance in the play. And a lot of these calls have been way away from the ball. And I, I guess they're their feeling is they just want to keep control of the game. But it breaks up the game, it's choppy, and let these two great football teams play football. And I agree completely. If there is a slight infraction, but it is has no effect on the outcome of the play, then I don't believe there, there should be a, a flag. So, that said, again in first and 20 range, back goes uh, Johnson but this time he's going to be sacked and looks like number 11 again comes in uh, Isaiah Corbett from his defensive end position to make the stop yeah it's a nice nice little blitz by Corbett but he comes untouched again they're really having trouble with, with the the speed of the defensive line of Glades this half um, 
they were running the ball very successfully, but as Dan pointed out, when you get those 15-yard holding calls, it becomes extremely difficult. Now, and, and also what's difficult for Pahokee here is not only have they lost Dunkley, they've lost Pickett, who also, besides running back, is a very good receiver. So those are two D1 guys you've lost. And to Joshua Johnson, who's playing quarterback, he's also a very good receiver. So do you think about maybe uh, bringing in Emmanuel Perez? We're on the ball, Gary. Actually, after that, maybe not. A very nice gain around the right-hand yeah. side. And uh, I think that was Corey Hill. But I believe that was Manuel Noel. I, I'm i pretty sure. There's a little screen pass. It's a good call. And a very nice little yes, run here down the sideline. But what I noticed after the play was over is Johnson, number two, is limping. Uh -oh. And if we can catch it, I, I think he might have he'd either cramped up or he's got a little turned ankle or something like that. All right, so that's going to bring up third and about 13 for the Blue Devils. Right from about the 45, 46-yard line. Over the middle, a throw off the hands there of Dennis Hall. And it's going to bring up fourth down, fourth down, which I can't imagine is going to bring up a punt, but we'll see. <laughs> well, Donnie Gibson, linebacker for... Blade Central got a nice drop into the secondary and actually had a very good chance of picking that ball off. Um, again, Johnson is going to be a, a wide receiver type player in, in the next level. And, yes. and it, without those two big threats, it, it's difficult for them to throw the ball. Johnson is committed to Florida State, and you can bet he won't be seeing any punting duties there, although this is not a bad one. Fielded at the 10-yard line. Uh, nice move before uh, looks like uh, Hall brings him down. Still trying to get the number there. Uh, looked like that was uh, Demetrius uh, Evans on the return. So uh, Glades is going to get it in a pretty fair field position at about the 25-yard line. Now it'll be interesting to see what Glades does here. Does Coach Hester play his normal game which is basically a vertical type game or does he feel like we need to control the ball because our defense is handling them uh, it'll be interesting to see uh, but I definitely I don't know if you agree it really feels like the momentum is starting to shift here in uh, in Glade's favor and assuming they don't do anything crazy but here's a throw over the middle and that's good for a first down and that was uh, that was to uh, we have another flag down. Oh, well, there is another flag. I do like the fact that he came out right away and threw the slant route. That goes to show he's not going to sit on the ball and try to run it. And I think that's the only way you play. I, I, I believe that firmly you stay with what got you here. But another penalty. So a holding call. And again, how many... I, I don't recall any game that I have seen this year, and I've been to a total of about eight high school games this year where I have seen so many first and 20s. Yeah, I. Or maybe ever. I coached for 30 years, and I've never seen this many penalties. This is really chopping up the game. It, it is. I, I, I did say it didn't make it any less exciting, but now it's starting to. Okay, so yeah. first and 20. Back, going long, got a man, and oh, almost a terrific catch. That was uh, Dent, Gregory Dent once again, and just over his shoulder, uh, but it was broken up on the coverage for uh, Pahokee was uh, Jeffrey uh, Davern. Yeah, we haven't said much about the free safeties for either team, but that was an excellent play on the ball. Yeah. Uh, also, Merrill Noel in on the now coverage. Now watch him come over here, the free safety, because he might still well, be able to get this in, and he does what he's supposed he was, to, separate him from the ball. He was going to drop that anyway. I think it hit right on his shoulder pad, but that was a near-perfect pass right there. Uh, and we've seen a lot of them out of uh, Thomas tonight. So second and 20, let's see, 23. Looking uh, to his right, but going left and now running the ball is Thomas, who's going to be pulled down for no gain. Antonio Ford, Dan, did a 
really good job of containing the quarterback and then wrapped him up by his legs and, and brought him down. That's a big play for Pahokee. So it brings up a third and 23. You know, I had a thought. Instead of going first and 10 in this game, why don't we just go first and 25 <laughs> and see if we can't play it from that yeah. standpoint. <laughs> so once again, Belglade, the Glade Central Raiders needing a big play here on offense if they want to keep this drive going. And looking deep, and he's got a man, and he's got the catch and the first down. Is he, is he also going to have the touchdown? He's breaking tackles, and he just may go. Oh, Dent just falls at the 15-yard line. Very nearly made that a touchdown. Uh, once again, we may see, we've seen a lot of penalties, but we have seen some incredible athletic plays here, Bill. And that was another one. It, it's no wonder that these teams get so many players to the next level. As Dent makes this, look at the throw, though. I mean, the, the throw is perfect. The coverage wasn't bad. The throw was perfect, and the safety turns him and gets him. You think he's down. Nice stiff arm there by Dent. Thought he had him. But number one and hit him high. And now he's got going to get about 15 more yards, and he almost broke it. And a nice block out in out. front of him there, too. Look at that. And then he just stumbles, or, or that might have been sick. I think he got his hand on his foot. Yeah. But what an athletic play. Just incredible. Timeout. He has a no flags on that play. So the Raiders now call a timeout, and uh, just amazing what we have seen so far in this game. Well, this is right here is the absolute pivotal pivotal part of the game. All right, and uh, since we have a timeout, I, since I am prompted once again, I will thank our sponsors. The Muck Bowl was presented by the Palm Beach County Sheriff's Office. Also, the Education Network, the City of Pahokee, J.P. Sasser and Raymond Hamilton, Lake Okeechobee Outpost, Big Dog Express of South Florida, Diane Walker, Tammy Bussey, Residential Appraisal Specialists, Inc., Friends and Family of the Western Communities, George Daguerre and Pro AV of Miami for supplying our three-play replay system. And uh, that's been terrific, got to say. And also, special thanks again to Pahokee City Councilwoman Diane Walker. Without her, the game would not have been possible. She uh, was a trooper for us in uh, going door-to-door. -door. That was a mouthful, Dan. Yeah. And I think I got through the whole list, and we're ready to play some football. First and ten from inside the 20-yard line for Glades. Low snap, looking to his right, probably gonna run here, he does. He tucks, and he's gonna be knocked out of bounds close to the 10-yard line, I think about the 12, and another flag. Flag number 50. My guess is it's holding on Glade yeah. Central. Again. Yeah, it looks he's pointing that way. I got that guy, and uh, it's one of the big offensive linemen he's pointing at. And I was, just about to say, if Glades punches this in, which is going to be more difficult now, I really feel that Pahokee can't make up the difference. Yeah, it's Not without their big guns. They, they don't seem to have the spark offensively to do that. If, if they could have established this running game and taken control with the penalties, have, have pretty much squashed those hopes. Well, we didn't, we didn't touch upon this pregame because we didn't have time, but the off-field things that have happened to Pahokee this year, normally I'd say has nothing to do with the football game. But when you start losing your best, some of your best players, you start thinking, what else can go wrong? Yeah. And it looks to me like it has absolutely affected them in the second half. Yeah. And uh, even if those off-field events uh, aren't affecting the game, certainly losing your best players during a game uh, is discouraging. So the snap to the right-hand side here, and a nice job defensively as uh, the direct snap to Chisholm is stopped There's for a short game. game by the Pahokee defense. We, you, I don't know about counting any team out now, especially this Pahokee team. They, you know, especially the things we've seen them do and, and how they can turn this game on a dime. They've done it a couple of times already. 